A gracious good day to one and all, once again, tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and Protector of Mexico, back with you all once again for episode number 141 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is September 17, 2020, our 182nd day under COVID-19 restrictions. It's a very special day. We'll get to that in just a moment, but let's begin with our national days because today is Constitution Day. And we'll come to why a little bit later on. Don't worry, everything will be revealed. It is International Country Music Day. It's for you country music fans out there. It is your day. National Apple Dumpling Day, okay, and Locate an Old Friend Day. Isn't that what Facebook is for? We believe so. Our Florida Man story today. Florida man and woman arrested for DUI have sex in the back of the patrol car. Always something interesting, isn't it? Well, as we alluded to earlier, today is a very special day of the Empire because it's Empire Day. The day we declared ourselves the Emperor of the United States in 1859, probably right around now, approximately. And so although we could tell this story quite well, we know it, we thought we would rely on John Ralston's book, This Date in San Francisco, because he did a nice short job on it. We could go on for about 30 minutes at least. And as a matter of fact, we will be going on tonight. Uh, so here's the information. Go to the uh, Facebook and uh, the Zoom meeting information is on there, 7 p.m. tonight. We're celebrating Empire Day, Make an Emperor Norton Sunday. The recipe is there. And if you do not have access to the Facebook, please email us at EmperorNortonTour at gmail.com and we will send you the link. We want to see you there. It's a free event. So, let us begin with the reading. September 17, 1859. San Francisco gets an emperor. Among the speculators who flocked to early San Francisco was one Joshua A. Norton. Of English Jewish parentage, Norton had arrived from South Africa in 1849 with a $40,000 inheritance. There is some question now as to whether or not it was an inheritance. He opened a cigar factory and a rice mill, invested in real estate, and acquired a substantial fortune. But after attempting to corner the rice market, he went bankrupt. Norton led a pauper's existence until September 1859 when he appeared at the office of Bulletin Editor George Fitch with this proclamation. At the peremptory request and desire of a large majority of the citizens of these United States, I, Joshua Norton, formerly of Algoa Bay, Cape of Good Hope, and now for the last nine years and ten months past, of San Francisco, California, declare and proclaim ourselves emperor of these United States. And in virtue of the authority thereby in me vested, do hereby order and direct the representatives of the different states of the Union to assemble in musical hall of this city on the first day of February next, then and there to make such alterations in the existing laws of the Union as may ameliorate the evils under which this country is laboring thereby cause confidence to exist both at home and abroad in our stability and integrity. The bulletin printed Norton's proclamation good-naturedly, and for over 20 years, San Francisco's citizens and business community observed his reign in the same spirit and accepted his subsequent claim as protector of Mexico after Francis Napoleon III installed Maximilian of Austria as Mexico's emperor. <coughs> Excuse me. Citizens bowed to Norton in his plumed beaver hat and military tunic with epaulets. 
His proclamations were printed. Seats were reserved for him in theaters. He was served at restaurants free of charge. And the bonds of his imperial government were accepted in payment of his simple needs. He even appeared in Robert Louis Stevenson's The Wrecker. True. Sporadic attempts have been made to have Norton committed as insane. Well, one that we know of. But his attempts protected him from such indignity. His friends protected him, rather, from such indignity. Possibly businessmen saw in Norton something of themselves if they had been ruined as Norton was, a there but for the grace of God go I sympathy. Sane or not, Norton reigned until he collapsed in 1880 uh, on his way to a meeting of the Academy of Sciences and died with his head in the lap of a royal subject. His funeral procession was two miles long. This is true. Norton was not a significant historical figure, excuse me, but he was a tourist attraction in his lifetime, and in an odd way, his legacy has continued in San Francisco for over a century, indeed. In the 1950s, the Chronicle exploited his memory by sponsoring an annual treasure hunt in his name. We'll talk about that someday. Clues to the location of the buried medallion with Norton's emblem were printed daily, the finder winning a $1,000 prize. Like other characters, he inspires costume party imitators in plumed hats and tun tunics, swords on belts. Probably the phrase, only in San Francisco, describes Norton the best. So, happy Empire Day to one and all. Let's move on to our other history. 1776, the Presidio of San Francisco is founded in New Spain. There's one wall left from the original structure that was there. It's now part of the Officers Club, an adobe wall, the oldest structure in San Francisco. 1787, the U.S. Constitution is signed by delegates at the Philadelphia Convention. 1849, Harriet Tubman is first escaped slavery in Maryland with two of her brothers. 1850, the fourth great fire of San Francisco. There have been many, six or seven. And that is why the Phoenix is on our city flag. It has nothing to do with the 1906 earthquake and fire. 1900, the Commonwealth of Australia is proclaimed. I don't think we did that. 1911, the first transcontinental airplane flight, New York to Pasadena in 82 hours and four minutes. 1954, Lord of the Flies by William Golding is published. 1972, BART Bay Area Rapid Transit begins passenger service in San Francisco. 1980, Polish workers under the leadership of Lech Walesa found the Solidarity Movement in the Gdansk Shipyard. 1986, the U.S. Senate confirms William Rehnquist as the 16th Chief Justice. 1987, Pope John Paul II arrives in San Francisco. We saw him go by on Geary Boulevard. 2011, the Occupy Wall Street Movement began in Zuccotti Park, New York City. 2019, Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg tells the U.S. Congress, quote, I know you are trying, but just not hard enough. Sorry, unquote. Our births today. 1874, Ben Turpin, silent movie star, known for the crossed eyes. Ooh, that hurt. 1883, William Carlos Williams, American physician and poet. 1907, Warren E. Berger, the 15th Supreme Court Justice. 1935, Ken Kesey, American author, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And 1942, Robert Graysmith, American Zodiac Killer researcher. Well, the mystery solved. It was Ted Cruz. Our guests today. 1858, Dred Scott, U.S. ex-slave who sought to sue for his freedom. 1899, 1899, Charles Alfred Pillsbury, American industrialist and co-founder of the Pillsbury Company. 1908, Thomas E. Selfridge, American aviator, the first person to die in an air crash. 
1996, Spiro Agnew, American politician, former vice president under Richard Nixon until he had to resign in 1969 uh, over corruption allegations. Actually, uh, wait, no, I'm sorry. He was vice president from 1969 to 1973. That's when he had to resign due to corruption allegations. I believe the first vice president to resign. And okay, who back in the day had a Spiro Agnew watch? This is an original from the Dirty Time Company. We have had it since the 1960s. Finally, 2006, we lost Patricia Kennedy Lawford, socialite member of the Kennedy family, sister to Robert Kennedy, John Kennedy, and Teddy. Our quote today is, well, about us. Why not? It's appropriate, isn't it? Quote, everyone understands Mickey Mouse. Few understand Herman Hess, and har hardly anyone understands Albert Einstein, and no one understands Emperor Norton. That was from Malaclips the Younger. Don't forget, as we said earlier, tonight is Empire Day celebration for the Emperor Norton Legacy League. Here's your information here. He said, if you don't have the Facebook, just shoot us an email, EmperorNortonTour at gmail.com. We will send you the link. It's going to be a lot of fun. We encourage all of you to attend. In addition, we now accept tips. Now, we have them for a while now. And they really help us out. We greatly appreciate all of our wonderful, generous donors. So here's the information for that. You can do Patreon for a monthly subscription or PayPal or Venmo. Here's the website for more information about the tours that the Countess and I did before the pandemic and hope to again someday very, very soon. So, until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, and therefore, stay healthy. If you do go outside, please wear a mask. It's very important. Don't take unproven cures that might just kill you, mostly. Might just do that. Be kind to one another. Until we see you again. A gracious good day and happy Empire Day.